Hi, I'm Dr. Ben Salento from Texas Sinus and Snoring, and today I want to go over some information about endoscopic sinus surgery. You may know someone who may have had this procedure before, or seen videos online, or even had this procedure yourself. The sinuses are air-filled cavities uh, that form the structures of our face and provide protection to important organs like our brain and eyes. They're open to air, which is what makes them so good at absorbing a blow. Think of bubble wrap around a fragile item. Things can go wrong with any part of the body, and sinuses are not excluded. The bones of the sinuses have a lining that is like the inside of your mouth. This line is extremely sensitive to allergens, infections, pollutants. This means that areas like Houston that have lots of mold and allergens have higher rates of sinus problems than drier climates. If the lining of the sinuses swell from contact with allergens, they can completely close the openings to your sinuses. Blocked sinuses lead to facial pressure, facial pain, headaches, nasal drainage, nasal congestion, and sinus infections that keep coming back again and again. Of course, we can sometimes help this problem with antibiotics if there's an infection or allergy medicine, if uh, allergies are a factor. However, medications themselves have side effects and taking antibiotics frequently can lead to bacterial resistance. Some patients have less severe disease and do not have any extra tissues blocking the way. These patients may be eligible for balloon sinuplasty, which is a less invasive option with great outcomes but there are certain conditions that exclude patients with sinusitis from having a balloon sinuplasty. Some patients have a genetic predisposition to developing polyps in their sinuses. Polyps are sacs that are filled with inflammatory tissue. They're an abnormal response to inflammation and they can take up a lot of space in your nose and make it difficult for you to breathe and even block the openings of your sinuses. If you have polyps, they need to be removed as medications are not able to get rid of the extra tissue. After removal, it becomes very important to avoid any source of inflammation. Controlling your allergies after surgery will be key to avoiding having the polyps come back. Normally opening the sinuses widely and getting rid of all the extra tissue blocking the way will lead to lasting results. Yeah. Other patients have a more difficult problem to treat. Their allergies to certain molds are so intense that their sinuses are filled with thick peanut butter-like substance that likes to keep coming back unless they have extremely thorough surgery with very wide openings to the sinuses and an aggressive post-operative allergy therapy. This is known as allergic fungal sinusitis. Still other patients have already had some form of sinus surgery in the past and may need another procedure because of the severity of their disease. You may be listening to this because you have sinus infections that keep coming back, leading to chronic antibiotic use. Opening up the sinuses can often help keep them from swelling shut, which is what leads to infections. So what should you expect from traditional endoscopic sinus surgery? You should expect to be asleep for the procedure, which normally takes one to three hours, depending on the complexity of the case. I've been doing this procedure since the early 1990s and have seen many ways of dealing with the post-op period after a FES or functional endoscopic sinus surgery. I no longer use occlusive packing material and only rarely use splints. So this should take care of the major sources of discomfort after surgery. However, sometimes packing and splints are necessary due to complexity or bleeding. In this case, we may need to place non-absorbable packing in order to ensure everything heals in the correct place. This will be removed during the first post-op visit and may, and may make it difficult to breathe out of your nose during that time. Since it's not possible to place stitches deep in the sinuses, you should expect some bleeding after your surgery from your nose. It's normal to bleed some for one week. It's also normal to have nasal congestion, watery eyes, facial pressure, and a little bit of pain or a headache while you're healing after your surgery. Most patients need three to five days off work, but this is determined on a case-by-case -case basis. It's important to remember to not lift anything heavier than about 10 pounds or exercise heavily for at least three weeks after traditional sinus surgery. It's also very important to refrain from blowing your nose for the first three weeks to avoid injuring yourself or having a bleed. 
All surgeries have risk and procedures on the sinuses are no exception. After surgery, we know you will have some bleeding, but severe bleeding that will not stop is a, is a rare risk of this procedure. For other risks to the surrounding structures like the eye or brain, we have extensive training and experience with these surgeries and also use advanced technology that uses our instruments with your CT scan. This is why it's very rare for any complication to happen after sinus surgery, but it's important that you know what is possible. Depending on the severity of your allergies and other factors, you may need another procedure in the future. Endoscopic sinus surgery is one of the most common procedures that I perform and one of my very favorite procedures to do. The reason I love sinus surgery is because my patients do so well afterwards. This is a surgery that can potentially change your life by decreasing facial pressure, pain, headache, nasal drainage, post-nasal drip, and improving your sense of smell and nasal breathing, as well as alleviating that fog uh, that you have in the mornings. I hope that I can help you as much as I have been able to help other people in the past.